Hi guys, Creek Stewart with Willow Haven Outdoor, and today I'm going to do a short video on what I consider the six most important features of how to choose the perfect survival knife. So let's get started with survival knife feature number one, size. Does size matter? Yes, absolutely size does matter. Too big and you sacrifice the ability to use your knife on detailed cutting tasks such as for example this trap and snare set. A huge bulky blade would be very difficult to use for carving detailed snare sets or precision cutting. On the flip side too small of a blade and you can't do rugged tasks such as for example batoning your knife to collect to collect firewood or split wood for sheltering for example splitting this big limb would be very difficult with a small delicate knife you need a knife that's small enough to cut precision cuts but large enough to be rugged and durable I found the ideal length is anywhere between 9 and 11 inches for example this blade here the Blackbird SK5 is 10 inches in overall length with a 5 inch blade just to give you a reference alright survival knife feature number two in my opinion your survival knife must be a fixed blade knife as opposed to a folder now I love a good quality folder and I carry this little Spyderco on a daily basis in my pocket but if I had the choice between a folder and a fixed blade for my survival knife where my life might depend on it I'll choose the fixed blade 10 times out of 10 a joint of any kind in any kind of foldable knife regardless of how good the quality is is a weakness and when you beat on this knife and abuse this knife you are eventually going to weaken, loosen, or break this joint. So make sure your survival knife is a fixed blade knife, meaning that there are no joints and it does not fold or break down. Survival knife feature number three. Your survival knife must be a full tang blade. When I remove the scales, the handle scales from my survival knife, you'll notice that the metal from the tip of the blade continues all the way through the entire handle profile of the blade. That's what we call a full tang blade. As opposed to, you'll see with this knife, is called a partial tang rat tail tang. This is incre a full tang blade is incredibly more substantial, durable, and less likely to come loose or have play in the handle. If you beat on a knife that has a partial or rat tail tang or push tang, there's a lot of different ty types of partial tangs. If you beat on one of these knives, it is going to eventually come loose and eventually develop play. And when it comes to this point right here, if the handle falls off, it's very difficult and dangerous to use. Whereas this knife right here is still very functional, very durable. I can wrap this handle in some paracord and still have a very functional durable knife. Choose a survival knife with a full tang blade. Survival knife feature number four, a sharp spear point tip. This may seem obvious but I've seen many survival knives that have funky tips whether it's arced, hooked, angled and I've even seen knives with flat pry bar tips. There are countless reasons why your survival knife should have a sharp spear point tip. Reason number one, self-defense. A sharp pointed tip is much more likely to penetrate thick hide or fur or layered clothing. And there are countless other reasons why a spear point tip is really valuable. For example, prying into this hickory nut, for example, and accessing these little crevices for nut meat is just one prime example. A spear point tip on your knife blade 
is not only the perfect self-defense weapon, but it also doubles as a very functional hunting tool. Either in your hand at close range or lashed to the, stip, to the tip of a spear like you see here for a longer reach hunting spear to provide some distance between you and whatever you might be hunting. Survival knife feature number five. A single edged blade meaning sharpened on only one side versus a double edged dagger style blade. There's a lot of reasons. Number one, when I do a lot of detailed carving, I use the back side of my blade as a thumb rest for more added control, like in this feather stick here. With a double edged dagger style blade, it's not only dangerous, but it's impossible to do. Number two, when you're batoning your knife, trying to split wood, if you were trying to do that with a double edged dagger style blade, it's really unproductive because you're beating on a sharp side. There is no flat, basically a flat beating side. Those are a couple of simple examples. In addition to a single edged blade, I like for the back edge of my blade the spine of the blade to be at a flat 90 degree grind as opposed to a, a gentle angle or bevel. And I do that because a flat 90 degree grind is perfect for scraping a fire steel where it can be incredibly difficult to do with a beveled edge. So choose a survival knife with a single edged blade. Survival knife feature number six choose a survival knife that has a solid, flat preferably, durable pommel, which is the butt, the bottom of the handle. I can't tell you how often I use the pommel of my survival knife, whether it's driving in tent stakes or even once I used um, my survival knife to chip out a hole for ice fishing where I use the pommel to drive the knife into the ice to chip it away. I've seen so many survival knives out there that have fancy caps on the end or rounded and beveled pommels that make it almost impossible to use your survival knife for light duty hammering and pounding. So guys, as you're thinking about picking up your next or first survival knife, consider the six key features of a survival knife. The size, it must be a fixed blade. It must be a full tang blade. It's got to have a spear point tip. It's got to have a single edged blade. And it needs to have a nice, solid, durable pommel. Anything outside of these six options, I consider personal taste and personal preference. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And remember, it's not if, but when.